Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and talk about none other than the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and see how it holds up in 2021. Now first of all, I really don't think anybody should be purchasing this device for 30,000 different reasons, so I'll go ahead and find the cheapest other devices that I'd recommend this year. You can get them down in the description below and help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the front panel and pretty much the whole entire body, this device does have that 5.7 inch Super AMOLED display and this is probably one of of its biggest assets. I remember when this phone first came out and even shortly after that, probably around the 3 to Note 4 era, this phone just looked so timeless and I was thinking to myself again here, I was like, if you pick up this phone, you don't really need to ever pick up another phone because the how much phone, better can phones get, you know what I mean? And I was wrong, thankfully. You have a little bit of bezel on the top and bottom, the home button and the capacitive keys to the side. And I actually did kind of something funny with this phone this year, which I'll get into in a little bit later. But definitely that 1080p panel on the front is one of its biggest assets. It's, it was ginormous at that time and it's still a fairly big panel. So all things considered, the device itself still looks pretty good, which is actually a pretty good thing, you know, considering this thing came out in 2013. Now you do have that micro USB port on the bottom, which was like that bigger one with like faster charging or something. And you had that headphone jack as well. You also still have that S Pen on this thing too. And that was one of the biggest assets of a Samsung Galaxy device was that the Note series had that S Pen capability, which was beautiful. And again, one of my favorite things to look at. Now you have the micro SD card slot on this device as well, which is kind of funny. And I really think this is one of the biggest things about this phone is that the removable back, the removable battery, the removable storage, I mean, how much better of a phone can you get? If it wasn't for the stock software, this device theoretically could last you as long as you want. If somehow you could just change the motherboard and make this phone faster, I mean, the resources are there. This device is still a really good feeling phone. It has so much going forward in terms of the way it looks, the I.O. of it, the removability of the battery and storage and all that stuff. I mean, there's just so much here for this device and it really is one of my favorite design phones still. And just, just the functionality of this device is crazy. So definitely when it comes down to that, huge thumbs up. You have that single camera set up on the back as well. And I'll definitely kind of sum up the whole entire body. I mean, it's a thumbs up. I, I really like the way it looks. I love the fact that it has that removable back, removable storage and all that good stuff. So that in and of itself, a huge thumbs up for sure. Now hitting on the cameras, like I I said before that single camera set up on the back it was a 13 megapixel sensor now when this phone first came out i remember hearing a lot about how good this camera was and even now when i look at it it's really not that bad of a camera of course it could be better i'm not trying to say this is the best camera ever but this camera is actually not bad in this day and age but flipping it to the flip side as well this thing in 2013 was able to shoot 4k videos on the back of this camera and i think that's a pretty big deal i don't know if the note 2 i don't think the note 2 was able to do that but this was 2013 we didn't even get 4k on an iphone until about two years later on the iphone success so the fact that this phone had that capability at that time is pretty insane to me and it's one of my favorite things about the samsung galaxy note 3 however on the front you do have a 2 megapixel front facing camera you were able to actually do 1080p video on the front of that which is even crazier than that 4k on the back in my opinion and i think it's an okay sensor on the front i mean it really isn't good i think when it first came out it was already right? But I don't know. It's just like the Samsung was just never able to do front cameras that good. They've since kind of changed. And I think ever since about that Galaxy S10 era, they kind of improved it a lot. But I mean, take it as you will. But I think the back camera is surprisingly good. And I think the front camera is surprisingly good as well. I think they really focused more on the resolutions than anything else. If you're trying to use this camera on an everyday basis in 2020, you're probably going to be disappointed because no 4K at 60, no 4K at 60 on the front. But also on top of that, there really isn't any additional lenses either and that's a pretty big deal when you have a phone like this you want it to be able to have the most amount of lenses and have the most amount of features there's a ton of features in this camera but there's not really a lot of lenses so that kind of already takes an L but in terms of that that pretty much covers up the camera standpoint now moving on to probably the worst and simultaneously the best aspect of this phone it's actually the software so funny enough, I was trying to go and custom ROM my Samsung Galaxy Note 3 last year, and I don't think I was able to do it, but on stock, it was, you know, started off with Android 4.3. It did eventually go up to Android Lollipop, which I think is a really cool software to end off at. It was a pretty big change, and I think it was actually one of the biggest changes in terms of Android version to Android version. But the problem is, is that Android 5.0 is extremely outdated. We're not getting any more versions after that, but in custom ROM land, when you go ahead and root and custom ROM this thing, you actually have a lot more capability than you think. 
you can easily go and custom ROM this thing and put really whatever version of Android that you want on it. I mean, I think there's going to be Android 11 ROMs if there already aren't any, but there may be even Android 12 ROMs probably in a couple of months on this thing. And if you can custom ROM it, if you can root it, if you get the specific models that have that capability, those are some really important things that you can do. And in my opinion, it is probably the most important thing if you want to pick up a Samsung Galaxy Note 3. It's a no-brainer. Like, you have to do it. I wouldn't recommend it otherwise. So the software-wise on stock, completely out it's ugly but if you want to custom ROM it it can really breathe some new life into this device now you do have that 3200 million power battery inside of this phone too now that's actually a pretty decent sized battery at that time but I feel like for how big this phone was they could have probably put a bigger battery but again you can easily remove it you can replace it you can go ahead and put a bigger battery if you want to inside of it and that's one of the biggest advantages for the Samsung Galaxy Note series is that you can easily go and expand the battery if you want to just like the storage so I would say the software is 50 50 if you're going to custom ROM it then I guess that's cool if you're not then don't even think about getting this phone but the battery life you can easily replace it and remove it so WMI standpoint. Now ending it off with the performance, this device did have that Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 chipset, wow surprisingly, the quad core CPU and Adreno 330 GPU and a couple different models but all those models had 3 gigabytes of RAM. Now the performance is actually pretty much as expected. In this day and age, right, right now I do have one year or touch whiz on my specific Note 3 and I have two different ones and the one I was able to custom ROM, if I was able to custom ROM it, I knew I custom ROM a Galaxy S6 but custom ROMs always just make things so so much faster and so much smoother but outside of that on stock on touch with this thing is pretty glitchy and it's not necessarily that it's buggy it's just a very glitchy experience you know everything works i guess as intended you know apps open this happens that happens but unfortunately it's just a very glitchy experience you know with the random widgets all over the place and samsung's noises that they always put in their ui at that time it's very annoying and i, I hate a touch with i never liked it it was like the most bloated version of android i never understood it and I think One UI is a humongous improvement. When you look at this version of Android and you look at the newer ones, I mean, there is some really huge differences that have happened. But again, I think if you get things open, if you go ahead and go into the App Store, if you go ahead and go you know, into Snapchat or whatever apps that are supported, you'll probably have an okay experience at best. But that's considering how old this phone is and also the price range of this phone because you can pick up this phone for like probably like less than $50 now. And there's a good reason for that. It's because the performance of this phone really isn't that great anymore more at that time it probably was you know when this phone first came out unfortunately that's not really the case anymore so you're not really getting that great of an experience when it comes down to this device in terms of a performance standpoint now if you custom rom it like i stated it may be a little bit of a different story you may be able to you know maybe you know get a little bit of a smoother experience there's less background processes running as well so that's another big asset but i'll probably tell you if you're planning on picking up this phone for the performance standpoint i wouldn't do it not in 2021 you're going to get a much better experience if you get something even a slightly more expensive like a google pixel the first one or something like that so in terms of performance that pretty much covers it up now to kind of sum up this video and say answer the question should you go and buy a samsung galaxy note 3 in 2021 well i will obviously tell you no this device isn't worth it in 2021 anymore there's really no huge point into picking this thing up versus picking up something like the original pixel or pixel 2 or one of those phones i mean i wouldn't recommend picking up a galaxy note 3 and that's coming from somebody who loves loves old phones and I think even custom ROM this device or has custom ROM older devices as well and you're just not going to get that good of an experience from this phone I mean there's a lot of areas where this phone could have been better at in this day and age I feel like the biggest problem is the software but you can circumvent that if you actually go and custom ROM it but I don't know how many people are going to actually do that so just to play it safe I would highly recommend picking up something like the original Google Pixel it came out about like three years after this phone and there is quite a bit of difference between the original Google Pixel Pixel and this device for sure. So I would highly recommend picking up the original Pixel if you can spend a little bit more money picking up like the Galaxy S10. That is an amazing phone. But I would highly recommend staying away from a Samsung Galaxy Note 3 in 2021. But surprisingly, like I said, there's still a lot of things that I wish newer phones had the capability of. The micro SD card slot, you know, it's missing on the S21 and on the Note 20. The removable back, the headphone jack, those things are really cool. And I wish we had that capability on those newer phones. Fortunately, we don't have it, but that's pretty much my take on this specific device in 2021 if you guys have any other questions or anything like that let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that means so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then